Hello, everyone. Ketta Kaufman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter. So this video is an update a little bit uh, different than my usual content, talking about the uh, Hurricane Helene and the uh, destruction uh, in the U.S. East uh, and what that might mean for uh, home building, home uh, repair, and of course for the lumber market. This is uh, early days and uh, there is not uh, data out yet about uh, how much reconstruction or repairs will actually need to be done. But we do know that the infrastructure uh, was very, very damaged and the roads. Now, the homes and the private citizens, that's one thing, but also manufacturing specifically for the sawmills is something else. And there are power outages and um, issues that impact industry and people uh, beyond actual flooding or actual uh, destruction of property. And so uh, just real quick, we have in uh, North Carolina, uh, Canfor Mill in the area uh, impacted by the storm and five other sort of medium sized sawmills. Uh, of enough manufacturing certainly combined to impact locally lumber supply. Uh, in Georgia, there are more than five medium sized, okay? And in uh, Florida, North Florida, there's many, many small sawmills, uh, specialty mills, and uh, little operations scattered all over the state. And we do have two West Fraser mills there in North Florida. One of them recently just had a curtailment closure announcement. And so now, of course, this uh, situation might change. Who knows? We, I'm just telling you what, is, uh, what facilities there are uh, in those areas, okay? And I had a really good look back. Now, Madison's Lumber Reporter was started in 1952 by Peter Madison. I'm the third owner. And so we have been tracking softwood lumber and housing since then. Uh, so of course, uh, over time, when things happen to change, whether it be policy with interest rates or economy with uh, housing starts or GDP and other things that affect uh, construction and lumber sales, uh, or uh, these major events like storms, we are uh, on there when it happens to see what effect it had on the lumber market. And so the two uh, more recently uh, circumstances was Hurricane Andrew there in Florida, 1992, and of course Katrina, 2005. Now Katrina is a little bit more uh, comparable to what we have now due to um, FEMA being in existence and a response, which uh, at that time uh, was still quite new and hadn't uh, really, it was more up to regional and states uh, prior to that to have their own response. So Katrina 2005, there were over 400,000 homes destroyed and 160,000 homes that had to be demolished because they had been in flood or underwater for such a duration of time, okay? Uh, and this uh, was mostly in Louisiana, but also in Mississippi and Alabama. So this ratio, this volume of homes accounted for 19% of what was single family home building in 2004, the previous year. I am putting in the caption here the links to where I found this information. Go ahead and take a look for yourself. Uh, I'm just giving you these summaries. There's lots more in these publications and news items than what I'm saying. Uh, just trying to keep things most relevant on topic. Um, and so at that time, uh, the uh, change to the manufacturing of lumber was 5.4 billion board feet, which was an increase of 9.2%, 9 
okay? And for panel, because of course, to build a home and also for rebuilding because roofing, uh, you need uh, usually plywood, plywood or OSB uh, oriented strand board, some kind of panel, okay? Uh, panel uh, manufacturing increased uh, by 4.3 billion square feet, which was 11.5% of the full amount the previous year. Uh, so those are the volumes. And so for prices, panel prices increased 20%, and lumber prices increased 7%. Now I have uh, explained before that most of the large percentage of the uh, plywood and OSB manufacturers are privately owned. So first of all, they don't need to report. They don't need to announce uh, changes to their um, manufacturing if they're taking volumes offline. But more importantly, since they don't have to answer to shareholders, if there is something monumental happening, they will spike the price of their material up higher. And on the other hand, if something, uh, if things are slowing down, maybe housing is slowing down, they will not drop the price below manufacturing, which Dimension Lumber Mills in the past have done because there's just so many mills. The customers can switch back and forth between regions and species, items, choose something different, and uh, there's a lot of competition. And so sometimes in the past, the cost of lumber uh, sale has dropped below uh, manufacturing cost does not ever happen with plywood and OSB, they go off the market. They just won't sell. If the customer is giving a counter offer below what the um, supplier is willing to uh, sell for, okay? So those were the increases in uh, 2005 due to Katrina. Uh, 1992, Hurricane Andrew, 28,000 homes were destroyed. Uh, on, now this is retail prices, plywood prices, jumped 45% and lumber prices jumped 17%. It's not 1992, it's barely even 2005. The thing to keep in mind, and if you just watched my previous video on the current lumber market, the kind of content I usually do, and what is happening with lumber prices here right at the beginning of October. Apart from everything that's happening with um, uh, customers and wholesalers not stocking inventory, uh, everybody doing just in time buying, nobody knows what's happening with the market. They don't want to get caught with wood that they bought and see the price drop. In all of that, we have very well stocked log supply at the mills. So this means two things. It means the producer has made the investment, they have spent the money, and they need to get the orders to make the wood to earn the money. And it means if there is a sudden change in demand, they are able to ramp up because they have logs ready to be processed. And we're coming into winter, which is uh, one of the main timber harvesting seasons in the North and on uh, Pacific Northwest. As the freeze comes on, the heavy equipment is allowed back into the bush and more timber harvesting can happen as it's needed for the coming spring, the usual home building season. So while it's a, quite a tight supply, the ability of the manufacturer to respond to a potential increase in demand is, is good, is in a good position. Uh, so back to the Helene. Uh, and what, like I just said, there are uh, these uh, few large manufacturers in the, the area that we will find out uh, soon what impact, for example, um, power failure might have or other issues, but definitely the road destruction causes a problem because it means that the wood can't get out of the yard. Of course it means other things, but I'm just talking about lumber right now, okay? So uh, 
these southern yellow pine mills that I've been uh, listing potentially closed due to lack of power or inability of anyone to get in and out of the mill. And maybe the workers can get there, but the trucks can't. These are big trucks. If you've ever seen a lumber truck, it's big and it's heavy. So it might not be able to uh, traverse even a smaller amount of destruction of the highway or the road. Um, so just real quick about Katrina, when I was talking about the increases in uh, the lumber prices and the panel prices, other building material prices also increased in 2005 uh, after Katrina when the rebuilding was happening. So the uh, wire, cable, gypsum, plastic, asphalt put together increased price by 8.5%. Again, the links are here in the caption. You can have a look and read through the entire report or article to show you exactly much more data than what I'm saying here right now. Uh, so in terms of Helene, the question is not just what is going to happen with lumber manufacturing and what is uh, going to be the reconstruction, rebuilding, repairs. How long is that going to take? What is the duration of time before a response? I mean, it's going to be winter, and some of these uh, areas are in uh, higher elevation, and they are going to, it's going to be cold. They need the home to be in one piece and to be able to heat. So, unfortunately, in the mountainous area or a little bit more inland, they don't have hurricane and storm before. And the people did not have flood insurance. They had the type of insurance of wind, storm, if a tree falls on your house, that kind of thing. But they, they don't typically have flood insurance. FEMA has a threshold that they will be able to contribute. And it's there, but it's maybe not, depending on how bad the, the um, destruction is, might not cover it. So in com that's why I said in comparison to Katrina 2005, this is different because 2005 FEMA swooped in and just literally what happened there I was already working for Madison's because I started in 2003. Literally what happened there is once the assessment was done, the engineers were in, they had a look, they could uh, make extrapolation of what they were going to need. FEMA literally spent three months buying all the lumber across the continent. Okay, They are able to store lumber stores inside a couple years, at least a year. And they'll just literally book warehouses all across the country. Money is no object. It's the government they can do, right? So that's not going to happen this time because the, due to the region of where it happened and the legislation of how emergencies are handled, it's not going to be a one swoop in and everybody gets covered. It's going to be an individual basis. People will have to apply. And like I said, there's a threshold in this circumstance to how much they are able to get for uh, repair or even reconstruction. I'm going to leave it there for now. As time goes by and we find out more, I will update. Usually what we do here at Madison's is weekly FOB mill, sawmill, lumber price uh, tracking. And this company, like I said, started in 1952. I'm the third owner. We track every week 500 individual softwood lumber and panel commodity prices. And so anyone who might be interested to know what's going on in the market, here in the caption is also a link to get a sample. And we will send you what that list of those 500 uh, lumber and panel commodity uh, items are and what the price is for that week. 
and we will also send you the commentary explaining why those prices changed. This is all in the dashboard, which customers log into overnight on Thursday and Friday mornings every week when we do an update. So if that level of detail is interesting to you, you can uh, click on the link and fill out the form and we will send that along. Otherwise, subscribe here on YouTube to be notified when we uh, make the usual updates that we do about the lumber market panel and housing. Click like so this video will be recommended to other viewers. And I'm going to leave it there for now, but check back as uh, usually things toward the end of the year wind down. But once again, we are in a year of unusual, especially an unusual time of the year. And so I will have more uh, of these summary updates to do as time goes by into the winter.